10 days, 10 days to go until the end of the Scottish transfer window. There's going to still be some big moves, surely, coming into Scotland and coming out of Scotland. And we're going to cover it all here on Fog Football. Welcome back, guys, to the channel for the 21st of August 2024 SPFL Transfer Roundup, where we're going to look at all the transfers from that day and round them up into one big video. So if you're not worthy of getting your own video, then you may end up here, which might mean you're shy, or you could be good and just get, you know, a second mention on the, the, the transfer roundup. It could happen that way. So with that said, let's get into it. Let's talk about somebody that isn't really getting talked about right now, and that is a Celtic player, and that is... Kobayashi. Now at the moment, the talk going around is that Brighton have signed Matt O'Reilly and it will be official within the next couple of days. And also Kyogo going to Manchester City. Apparently Manchester City interested in Kyogo. But nobody's really talking about Kobayashi, but he's away. He's gone. He's done. He has left Celtic. He has agreed a deal with Portuguese side Portimonis. And they have snapped up the Celtic defender on a four-year deal. So, uh, yeah, he got brought in by Ange Postacoglu. It just didn't really work out for Kobayashi. I mean, he did get appearances. I wouldn't say he got a proper run in the team, though. I don't think he got a proper chance to really show what he could do. But that seems to be a place where Celtic have just struggled in general over the past couple of seasons. You know, that centre-back position right now, they've got Welsh pairing with... Um, Carter Fickers, but they just haven't really found a good enough replacement for the Swedish guy whose name has totally, yeah, it's, I've totally went blank. I can't remember the name of the Swedish guy that used to partner Carter Fickers, but they haven't really found a replacement since him. Uh, was it Star Starfelt? That's the one, Starfelt. They haven't found a replacement since Starfelt. And, you know, they, they tried Lager Bielka. I mean, they tried the other guy who was a failure as well, and another name that I cannot remember, Kobayashi got an opportunity, but you know, none of those guys have really worked, and right now, they find themselves with Liam Scales being the best option that they have, and right now, he is the best option, but is he good enough? Do you really want to go into Champions League games with Liam Scales as one of your starting centre-backs? No disrespect to the guy, I just think he sticks out like a sore thumb, but anyway, Kobayashi, he has left, he has went to Portimones, apparently there was interest from St Mirren and he could have linked up with his fellow Celtic player Quan in a loan deal but it looks like he's decided to say no to St Mirren and head to the Portuguese league which is fair enough for Kobayashi and yeah hopefully he can have a good career in Portugal. I don't really blame him, you know, Paisley or Portugal? Yeah, I can see why he's done it. I can see why he's picked Portimonese. But anyway, let's move into a guy that has won quite a lot of trophies in Scotland. And he's not a Celtic player. His name is actually Stevie May. St. Johnson striker Stevie May has joined Livingston on loan until the end of the current season. The 31-year-old is having his second stint at the club after previously playing for St. Johnston in 2014 where he did win a cup he's came back to St Johnston he's helped win more cups and now he is away again this time to Livingston so yeah a Livingston statement said quote we're delighted to announce the signing of striker Stevie May who joins us on a season long loan from St Johnston Stevie will wear the number 17 shirt and will be available for Saturday's championship clash with Greenick Morton our thanks go to Craig Levine Gus McPherson and all at McDermott Park for their help in getting this confirmed, end of quote. So Stevie May going to Livingston could be a decent signing for them. Will he offer the firepower to get them back into the top flight? Time will tell. But one interesting thing i actually seen here about Stevie May is he's got one cap for Scotland, but he's won three cups. That's crazy. He has one cap for the national team, but he's won three cups, two Scottish cups and one league cup. That's mental. That is mental. That's the same amount of cups as Tavernier. That's crazy. Stevie May. And I, I totally forgot he actually came back to St. Johnson in time to win that cup double. I didn't even think he was part of the squad. I couldn't even remember. I thought he came in after that. But no. Stevie May with three cups to his name. Incredible. Incredible. Speaking of incredible, Manchester City, the English Premiership champions. Yes, they apparently want to sign Kyogo Furahashi. And we now have a price tag revealed. It's been reported that Celtic will demand at least 
20 million in order to sell Kyogo Furuhashi to Manchester City. Now, first of all, look, is Kyogo good enough to play for Man City? Some people will laugh at this. I think he is. I mean, I don't think he's going there to be the number one. Of course he's not. Haaland is the number one. But I think Kyogo, in the Premiership, with his play style and the pace that he's got and his reaction speeds and the, the runs that he makes, I think Kyogo would be a great addition to any team coming on late in the game. I th especially if you're if you're like defending or you're holding on to a draw and maybe you're looking to counter-attack. I think having Kyogo coming on fresh with like 20 minutes to go, I believe he could be an absolute game-changer in the Premier League. So, look, I don't think it's a bad signing for City at all. I mean, he's not going to be number one. We know he's not going to start most games, but to have him to come off the bench and to you know add extra goals and to change things, he could definitely work. Now, Celtic reportedly want twenty million for Kyogo, which kind of seems it seems fair because remember when Spurs were coming in, yeah, like well they didn't come in, but when Spurs were linked with Kyogo when Ange first left, it was being reported around twenty five million. So you know he's a year older now. He's got one year less, uh, one year less on his contract after signing a four-year deal. So, I mean, it does make sense that his transfer fee would maybe go down a little bit. Plus, at last year, I don't think he had his greatest season, but I still think Kyogo's a good player. He's a fine player. I mean, for me, he's the best overall attacking player in the Scottish Premiership by far. I mean, he is way better than Adia. I mean, it's not even fucking. People think Adia is better than Kyogo, man. I don't know what you're watching, but you don't know football. And Kyogo is, is the best attacking player in the league. So there's that. And I, I think he would be a good addition to uh, Sp well, Man City, Spurs, anybody in the Premier League that wants to sign him. So, yeah, uh, we will see what happens regarding that. And finally, let's end it with Rangers and their hopes of bringing Abdallah Sima back to the club because those hopes have ended. Sima has joined French side Brest on a season-long loan and he will get the chance to play Champions League football after they finished in third place last season. Something which he unfortunately wouldn't get at Rangers if he went back since they've been knocked out the Champions League. But also there was a financial aspect where Rangers just couldn't afford to bring Sima back, which is disappointing because when you look at Sima, I do think he was probably the best signing that Michael Beale made. I think when you look at the Rangers players that came in last year, I mean, he was the only attacking one that you would give pass marks to. You look at Dessers, Danilo, Lammers, I mean, I, I wouldn't have anything positive to say about them. I mean, maybe Dessers is improving now, but yeah, I'd say the only player that got pass marks on his first season is Seema. I think he's someone that Rangers would have probably wanted to have back if they could, but the financial aspect was just too much for Rangers and now it's official that he's been loaned out by Brighton to Brest for the season so yeah uh, good luck to Abdallah Sima and it'd be you know he's gonna be playing Champions League football and he's gonna give the world a chance to see what he can do so yeah fair play to him uh, I don't think he'll be making that a permanent move but who knows maybe he can uh, Brest or the one season wonders or, or can they be a team that will be at the top of the French League for years to come we'll have to wait and see but anyway guys that's it not a lot of news happening today, but we have one player leaving Celtic in Kobayashi. Another player who's set to leave very soon in Matt O'Reilly. A third player in Kyogo who could possibly lead to Manchester City. And we have a three-time cup winner, Stevie May, dropping down into the championship. There's your news there, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, been Fog Football. Peace.